Okay, so here we have the 2010 Jeep Rubicon uh, running on hydrogen and gasoline for now. And I uh, just finished the setup, still need to complete the uh, wiring. Right now it's running off the jumper cables. The engine is started, and I do have the hydrogen pumping into the air intake. So let me give you a look. Okay, here's the cell mounted, uh, let's see, down here, that's the uh, cell that I built, it's a 11 plate cell, two positives, one negative, four neutral plates in between, total of eight neutral plates, um, let's see, these are, uh, this is my reservoir right here. Um, as you can see, you've got the uh, here going down to the cell. You've got the return uh, coming up and bubbling um, into uh, into the reservoir, making a nice amount of bubbles there, bubbling real nice. Then I've got this is the uh, gas line here coming into the uh, secondary bubbler or scrubber, whatever you want to call it. And then I've got this line going down and it wraps around here so it's not going to be in the way of anything when I'm off-roading. And then uh, feeding straight into the air intake there. And that's pretty much the setup. I can show you it is it is pumping out hydrogen quite a bit actually and uh, that'll wrap it up I'm gonna go ahead and get the wiring set up so uh, for now I'm gonna kill it and adios to make this planet as eco-friendly as possible and he's doing his part by driving a water fuel Jeep of all things here's this week's screen report It's my toy and it's my daily driver. Scott Bowman became proud owner of this 1961 Jeep CJ5 close to eight years ago, but only recently did he convert it into a hybrid, using water to eventually turn into hydrogen, and for a cost of less than a hundred bucks. Water fuel cells, as the coils are going, um, you can see the hose, the main hose, it just goes right to my carburetor and uh, the vacuum line, it takes it right on into the carburetor and burns it. Before, he used to average around 20 miles per gallon, but now that number is up to 33. You can definitely tell it runs quieter, it runs cooler, and uh, my emissions are... ...wondering and started time. acting, and as Wayne Harvey shows us, he's getting pretty impressive results. Todd Eaton was getting 15 miles per gallon with his six-cylinder Jeep Wrangler. Now he's getting 22 miles per gallon. It happened after he put a pair of hydrogen cells under the hood. What it does is it lets the uh, petroleum burn more efficiently. Increases it almost by, uh, almost by half. Uh, you could get up to 75% to 80% uh, efficiency. He's experimented on two Jeeps, and both increased their fuel economy by more than 40%. It took a lot of research and some errors to get everything just right. Electricity is fed into uh, positive plates, and electricity is fed into negative plates. And from there you get a chemical reaction. Uh, the water is uh, actually, the hydrogen and the oxygen is separated from the water uh, and bubbles to the surface. The only byproduct after the hydrogen gas is put into the engine cylinders is water and that comes out of the exhaust. Eaton had his in place during this winter and even when the water in the cells did freeze, it wasn't an issue. Uh, just turning the key and letting the, uh, letting the cells warm themselves up, it, uh, it went ahead and melted the ice and then worked as normal. Todd has bigger plans for his hydrogen cells. With the vehicles, it's just a hobby for me. Um, my big picture is uh, how can I incorporate this with my house? How can I uh, incorporate this into uh, lowering my heating costs and uh, possibly my electrical bill? It's an answer that a lot of people are looking for. Wayne Harvey, WABI, TV5 News, Herman. Most people do not need
uh, the help of a mechanic at all and can install it themselves simply using just simple tools such as these. When you unpack your generator, one of the first jobs you're going to have to do is to install the little small hose barb connectors which adapt you from the tubing into the HHO generator. Just firmly push it into place and then your next step is going to be install the little tubing connectors as so just very very lightly with your fingers until you feel a little bit of resistance they spin down very easily at first until you feel a little bit of resistance then stop and then you have an upper and lower hose that will go to your uh, reservoir, but we're going to show you a little trick today. You can install the whole piece of tubing at one time. The connectors simply push in and rotate slightly. And then it's in place. And then it's just another half turn maybe with your fingers. Just finger tight, no tools, until it's firm. It doesn't rotate easily. And same on the other nozzle. Just press firmly into place while rotating. And then what you can do now when you do your installation is you just run the hose pair up to the reservoir which we'll show you how to install in a few minutes. One common mistake people make uh, in an installation, we'll show you this before we even start, is uh, routing of the hoses incorrectly. And most critical is the upper hose. When it's sitting in the vehicle, the lower hose is connected here, and the upper hose is here. If at any time this upper hose goes below the level of the goes below the level of the nozzle, it'll lower the water level. The generator will no longer be full. It'll lower right down to here. It'll pump the water back up into the reservoir, and you'll have almost no water in the generator. In the worst case, if the hose went all the way down before it routed, the generator would empty right out and produce no output at all. So it's very important that any dry cell, the upper hose, never goes below the starting point. To install the generator, you first have to locate a good spot down low in the vehicle. It's going to be positioned below the bubbler. It's ideally up front and away from uh, engine heat. The most common spot to install a generator is in between the radiator and the front grill, just like here. Now, the last important thing to note is the electrical connections on the back. The polarity does not matter. Uh, red and black, plus and negative, or reverse it, it's fine. But it's best not to let the generator touch any metal surfaces. Uh, that'll uh, get in the way of the PWM controller later on. To access the space for the hydrogen generator, Usually, the easiest way is to just remove the grill, and it's often just a few simple screws here, here, and uh, one on each corner. And I'll show you how, how easily and quickly this comes apart. often clips at the bottom and it lifts out of place very easily. And from here you can easily see the hydrogen generator. It's been secured and placed uh, not to any touching any metal surfaces in place by tie wraps. The upper hose never goes down in position. It only runs clearly and smoothly up to the bubbler at the top and it's very important that the bubbler is always higher in position than the generator and that the tubes flowing to the hydrogen generator flow as smoothly as possible without any high spots to create airlocks. The lower hose of the bubbler will go to the lower nozzle on the hydrogen generator. The upper hose on the side will go to the upper nozzle on the hydrogen generator 
and the hydrogen produced comes out this very top tube on the bubbler here and it runs down underneath the engine and we've done something quite creative in this installation. We've actually brought it in through the air box and we can't, uh, we come in through here up from underneath. We bring our hydrogen into here and we're going to open up the air cleaner and show you how we did that. We didn't even have to make a hole anywhere for this installation. This lifts easily out of way. Remove the air filter and look inside and there's where we bring in the hydrogen. And the wiring for the hydrogen generator is very simple also. Just the positive and negative wires uh, from here are brought up in a pair uh, up towards the battery, black and red, all the way up towards the pulse modulator, which is here. The pulse modulator has four wires. Two uh, shouldn't be uh, extended. They should connect directly to the battery as shown here. The red wire is very simple. It goes to the fuse box. And we just used a simple fuse tap here to find a 12 volt source that turns on and off with the ignition. The last wire is the yellow wire, which is the hydrogen control. It controls uh, the current going through the generator. It connects to the black wire of the hydrogen generator. The red wire coming up from the hydrogen generator goes through a 15 amp fuse and makes a direct connection to the battery. It's that simple. If you have any questions, just let us know. We provide full service and support before, during, and after the sale.